Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to our service on the 13th of December, coming from Stangram and Fassett Churches. Today, it's not long till Christmas. It's also Gaudete Sunday, and a day when, when I'm in church, I should be wearing rose-coloured garments, as is traditional for Gaudete Sunday. It's the time when we start thinking about joy. And of course, the greatest joy is when Jesus was born at Christmas, those 2,020 years ago. So I pray that you will enjoy being with us this morning, and you too will find joy today. Amen. So we come to light our third Advent candle this morning, and you'll notice that it's pink, and more of that later in the service. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare, for you were very near. As Christmas grows, grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let's just spend a moment in quiet as we come before God to say sorry in the words of our confession. The axe is laid at the root of the trees, and if a tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down. But confident in God's mercy, we confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So now let's listen for God's word coming to us in Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. God be in our listening and in our understanding. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to the end. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captive, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among, among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up from all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading for today is taken from John 1 verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He didn't fail to confess but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am and the voice of one calling in the wilderness makes straight the way of the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptise if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptise with water, John replied, 
but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to undo. This has happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, today we have some amazing passages from the Bible that tell us so much. The Gospel reading today tells us of John the Baptist, that mysterious man who appears in the desert, the wilderness. He was a bit of a strange character by all accounts, but also a humble person who was willing become, to become less important to allow Jesus to literally shine and be recognised as God's son. John was someone that the Jewish people of the day thought important. He, they thought he might be the Messiah, the Christ, who they'd been waiting for for such a long time. But no, as our reading says, John said quite clearly he was not a, the prophet or the Messiah, but he'd come to witness the true light of the world and to testify, let's give account of that true light, the true light being Jesus, the Son of God. And it would be Jesus, when he began his ministry, aged around 30, who would quote for the passage from Isaiah that we also heard today. As Jesus said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for captives and release from darkness the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Those words were what Jesus started his ministry with, standing in a temple. Well, that's the light that Jesus would bring into the world, the light that John the Baptist was talking to. Jesus would indeed be anointed by God. In fact, the word Christ means the anointed one. And he would indeed do what this passage says, even though that passage from Isaiah was written hundreds of years before Jesus' birth. But it's a message that was written for Jesus, and it's a message that's written for today. It's our role on to carry on the work of Jesus. I think that if any of you here have known me at all over this past year, you know my passion for caring for people in any sort of need, especially those who are being oppressed by society in any way. Much of my ministry is based on this passage from Isaiah, as I said, read by Jesus in the temple at the very beginning of his ministry. It's also based on Matthew 25, which was spoken to Jesus at the end of his ministry. It's a call for all of us to follow Jesus in feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, visiting prisoners, and very importantly, sharing the good news of God's love for each one of us. Through our ministry here in these churches, through the extended ministry of our charity, Mary's Child, each one of us have been doing our best to meet the needs of the people around us in these difficult times. We're all called to be servants of God and to look for the poor and oppressed in our communities and in the world. We're all called to follow the ways of Jesus and take God's message of love and care into the world. In less than two weeks' time, we will celebrate Christmas. It was the time when we remember that Jesus was born as a fragile baby. He was reliant on the strangers, being given gifts from wise men. But he was then to become a refugee. Jesus was destined to fulfil these words of Isaiah. As I said, he did indeed. He reached out to the poor, spoke about injustice, challenged the systems of the day that oppressed the poor. He freed people from their sins and gave physical sight to the blind, as well as metaphorically opening the eyes of the people to the realities and love of God. And he declared the hope of the world to come and showed people the way to eternal life with God. All things that we celebrate and remember each time we meet in our churches. Because 2,000 years on, the poor are still being oppressed all around us and are desperate for good news. Many people are prisoners to debts or addictions or the lure of money, fame, social success. Many are literal prisoners, locked up in jails, and of those, more than 90% have been victims of abuse. And Covid has made a difficult world even more difficult. And of course, we all know that the majority of people are blind to faith, and blind to the love and care of the God who created them and longs to love them and know them. They have no hope and no understanding of the eternal life God promised to those who believe. So it's our job today, this Gaudete Sunday, and always, to continue spreading love and joy, but also appealing for justice. 
and a good saying to always think of. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good people should do nothing. So this Gaudete Sunday, as we think of joy, we think of the beauty of Christmas, we think that all that Jesus did for us, it's our turn to play our part in loving our neighbour, standing up for justice where we need to, and it's our job to keep the light of the world glowing in the darkness. We can be, like John the Baptist, witnesses to God's love for all his children. We too can help the light of Jesus, the Anointed One, shine into people's hearts and minds. So this Sunday, let's indeed shine. Let's reflect the light and love of God and his joy to all those we see, all those we meet, all those we pray for. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you came as a light that shines in darkness, and a light that darkness cannot overpower. Enlighten our hearts and minds that indeed you are present in our midst today. We are in difficult times, and we pray for everyone who is connecting into this service today and their families, that God can restore them and give them his love and peace and grace. It is that time we call Advent, when we prepare for the coming of the baby Jesus, the greatest gift ever given to mankind from my Heavenly Father. It's a time for waiting and vigil, when Mary pondered the promised gift from God, the Word made flesh, the gift that saves. We are in fact all waiting and praying and hoping for another gift from God, the gift of a vaccine to lead us out of this terrible pandemic. A gift that will be a light at the end of a very long tunnel. It's, it's promised soon, but we are not yet there. And we pray for God to give us patience and keep us all safe over this coming Christmas period. We ask God for his grace, his love and mercy and guidance for all those families and businesses struggling to keep afloat at this time. We pray for our Prime Minister, our government, who, uh, who make important decisions affecting our daily lives. We pray for those affected by the virus. Merciful God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter at this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community and show us where and how we can help, perhaps with donations to our charities that our church supports, Mary's Child Peterborough, the Light Project and the Parish Pantry and all other ways that we can help. Bring healing, Lord, to all who suffer the ravages of disease. Assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction of COVID. And here we remember all our NHS and service workers, that God may protect them and help them. Hear us, Father, as we ask your loving help for all the sick, comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind and body, especially those who we know, who are our friends in this community and give them courage and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Christmas can be a difficult time for so many. It brings joy and it brings sadness. Hear us, Lord, as we remember all those who mourn their loved ones around this time of year, especially those who have lost loved ones to COVID. We thank you, Lord, that there is no place from which you are absent, that neither time nor distance can separate us from yourself, that those who are absent from us are present with you. Have in your holy keeping, Lord, all those we remember in prayer. May they rest in your eternal peace and rise in glory to the heavenly home. Lord, hear us. 
the Lord graciously hear us. We remember our churches struggling at this time and not able to meet to praise the Lord as we usually do. We pray that God will build and restore his church again. We ask for the blessing of guidance for all our church leaders and especially Reverend Andrew and Reverend Carol and our retired vicars and ministry teams. Help us to find you, Father, this Christmas in quietness and prayer to get true peace and to find the true meaning of Christmas. Renew in us the spirit of faith and service that men and women may find in Jesus the fulfilment of their lives. We give thanks that you gave us Jesus to be the light of the world and our saviour from sin, our helper in every time of trouble, our strength and refuge in weakness. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come Emmanuel. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he turn his face toward us and give us his peace now and forever. We commend ourselves and all Christian peoples to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who, who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So may God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for life eternal. Amen. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. And as we await our coming Saviour, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing.
Bless 